Hello, my name is Elliot Stapleton. And if you're watching this, you likely have questions about estate planning, which means you have questions about control. Control of who would care for your children if you were gone. Control of who would receive your assets after your life. Control of the decisions that relate to your health and control of the expenses that your family would have to pay after you are gone. I'll be answering those questions in this webcast. So let's get started. So the first item we'll cover is a will. Now the way a will works is after your life, assets in your name transfer through the probate court. Now the probate court is in place to make sure those assets are used for the right reason. And if you have minor children, the probate court makes sure that those assets are used for your children. And the guardian is put in place by the probate court to ensure those assets are distributed for the right purpose. The one drawback is once your children reach age 18, those assets are distributed outright. And as everyone would probably agree, age 18 is not the pinnacle point of anyone's maturity level. Administration also takes between six and 12 months, even if the children are over the age of 18. Uh, creditors actually have a minimum of six months to make a claim against the estate. And typically, uh, probate takes closer to 12 months to administer in full. Uh, creditors also have an opportunity to make a claim against your assets here. Uh, they stand in line in front of the beneficiaries and are paid first. On top of that, there are also costs associated with probate. Those costs range from 3 to 5% of the assets, uh, and that's a, that's a good deal of money. Uh, to use an example, uh, let's say your house, your assets in your home, your bank accounts total $300,000. Well, I have an example here of the Hamilton County Probate Court calculator, and as you can see, the expenses would be $12,000. Uh, so $12,000 is a, a large amount of money just to spend on administrative costs. And I'll show you in just a moment how to avoid these. The last item, uh, asset information. Uh, if your assets are going through probate court, they're actually public record. Now some people say, well, after my life, I, I really don't care what people know about me. While other people say, I'd like to keep my private information private. So an alternative is to use a revocable living trust. Here, during life, your assets go into a trust, which means they avoid probate. By avoiding probate, instead of your assets going to children at age 18, they can be held in trust and distributed based on standards that you decide on. For example, uh, whether your children are eight years old or 18 years old, you can make distributions for health, education, support, and maintenance, the essentials in life. And then you can select a later date, a, a more mature age for the assets to be distributed outright. Here, for example, uh, the remainder will be distributed at age 30. The nice part too about administering a trust, if the assets are going outright, the time is much less one to three months, uh, assuming all of the assets are going through the trust directly to the beneficiaries. And because there is less time involved, less work involved, the administrative cost is much less too. Uh, Zero percent to one percent, as opposed to three to five going through probate. A nice benefit as well is that unsecured creditors attached to probate court, well, Using a trust, you avoid probate court. So you avoid those unsecured creditors. Uh, one caveat to this, if the creditor files suit while you are alive, you can't get out of a lawsuit just by dying. Uh, and if the creditor has collateral like your mortgage or a car note, that debt actually attaches to the asset. Uh, so you don't avoid that creditor. But student loans, credit card debt, medical debt, those things would all be avoided. And a nice added bonus, a trust is private. There's no public record, there's no public information, and your asset information stays between you and your children. A lot of people also have assets in life insurance and retirement accounts. 
Uh, typically, life insurance is actually purchased for the very purpose of making sure if you are gone, that your children have funds to pay for their college education. Well, here we can make that happen. We would list the spouse as the first beneficiary and the trust second. That way, after your life, your assets flow through the trust and are distributed based on the plan that you have in place. The other considerations in estate planning relate to potential disability. The first is a financial power of attorney, which allows you to appoint a person to make your financial decisions if you are incapacitated or incompetent. The benefit of this is that it avoids the need for a guardianship. So if you are in an accident, if you are in a coma, this would allow your spouse or the person that you decide on to make financial decisions for your benefit. In addition, a health care power of attorney allows you to appoint a person to make health decisions if you are unable to do so. This too avoids the need for a guardianship. And then a living will gives you the chance to state your preferences on life support and life sustaining treatment. This includes things like organ donation. And finally, a personal record book is something I create for clients to state their non-legal wishes. Uh, this includes, for example, whether they would want a burial versus cremation, uh, where their important assets are located, and who to contact if uh, they're unavailable. Uh, this is nice, especially when you have family members and friends who would be taking over for you and may not have access to your financial records or important legal information. To summarize, an estate plan includes a will, which allows you to appoint a guardian to take care of your children if you were gone, the trust to distribute your assets in the way that you want them to be distributed and to limit the expenses related to your estate, a financial power of attorney, which gives you the ability to appoint a person to make financial decisions if you are unable to do so, the health care power of attorney, which also allows you to make a decision on who would make your medical decisions if you were unable to do so, a living will, which gives you a chance to state your preferences on life support and life sustaining treatment, as well as a personal record book where you can put down your important non-legal wishes. If you have additional questions on this presentation or estate planning in general, feel free to contact me and we can schedule a free consultation. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.